listen up, all fight fans and fitness junkies. You've been listening to me talk about Jocko Fuel for a while now, and if you've been waiting, the wait is over. This August, you can score a massive 30% off on all of Jocko Fuel's top tier supplements. That's right, 30% off. Jocko Fuel is loaded with all of the good stuff and none of the bad. We're talking no added sugar, no artificial sweeteners, and absolutely no gray area or banned substances. Just pure, clean fuel to power your performances. And guys, I really want you to try some of my favorites like Jocko Go and Jocko Hydrate. This deal is only going to be available for the month of August. So use code CHAIL30 or go to JockoFuel.com. Don't wait. Fuel up with Jocko Fuel and crush your goals. Guys, click on the link below to make it happen. I've tossed and turned over this. I've tossed and turned over this, and I went back and watched it again, and there was things that I missed. Now, let me start at the very beginning and why I missed it. I'm there live, right? You're counting on me. You're counting me to see this live. I didn't see when Herb stepped in and broke it up. I had my earpieces in. And one thing that was unique about this venue is for the first time ever, you get to hear these guys. So I'm hearing the commentator, Daniel, Joe, Anik, talk about Herb talking to athletes and possibly the corner. But I didn't see it. So see, it's very different when you go back and watch it because it was Marab that started this. The commentary stayed on Herb. It was Marab that started this, and in sports, whether it's you or particularly if you're a coach, if your athlete loses focus, it is, it is game over. I mean, it is a nightmare. You would, oh my goodness, what happened here? So when I see it and I see Marab start pointing and start yelling at what turned out to be Coach Tim Welsh, it was a very dramatic moment. So, okay, Herb gets in, and Herb does everything right. He tells him, hey, knock it off. Don't start this. All right, great. They go back to fighting. Into that round comes, Herb goes and talks to Tim Welsh, and Herb informs him, which also informed me, I, I did not know this, that there's a rule that's called excessive coaching. So Herb is now letting him know, at least verbally to some degree, that this rule exists. As you can hear, that's pretty wide open for interpretation, but I could apply it, and I'm going to apply it to you, possibly later in the evening. All right. So, and guys, this is just the first five minutes. So we're getting ready to go into the second round, and O'Malley gives rounds away. Like, that. that's not totally uncommon. Anderson used to give rounds away. Nate Diaz almost always will give a round away. Kind of warming up and kind of learning is what it looks like from the outside. A little more of the reality is those elite guys are making adjustments. They're, they're not actually slow starters, like some might believe. They're making adjustments. O'Malley knew from Jump Street, and I'm talking about the moment he got done with Cheeto Vera and Marab is in the front row. He knows from Jump Street, I'm going to have to stop a double leg. So I'm not overly worried about this contest because, and I'm talking about you guys just going to the second round. I'm not sure this contest has started, right? That, that was just kind of my perspective. There's plenty of time, plenty of math. You got a guy that's looking for a knockout anyway. O'Malley was breathing pretty good. If you can eat up a little bit of clock, it's very strategically good, even if it moves you to a 10-9 the opposite way against someone like Marab. Like that conditioning... Knowing how to slow things down. Okay, great. I'll give you a great example. Conor McGregor versus Khabib. Conor had to worry about two things. Takedowns, overwhelming cardio. That's what Khabib brought to the table. The better athlete, the better DNA, the better movement, the better one-shot night over, all went to Conor. Conor had all of those things. Khabib would not disagree. One thing that happened with Connor when he went down is he stayed there after the fact Coach Kavanaugh talked about. We knew if we went down, we're going to lose that round. He's going to keep us there long enough to lose the round, so just stay there. Settle down. Don't waste your energy trying to get up. Don't waste your energy trying to finish him. Stay there. And I've never heard that strategy before. 
That's why I bring it back to that. I have literally never heard that except Coach Kavanaugh when he said it about those two after the fact. Okay. And there's a lot of similarities between McGregor and Khabib, Marab and Sean. So as the fight gets going, and you'll see this in boxing even more than you'll see it in MMA, if something works, if a combination works, go back to it. The theory on that is a guy can't change in the moment. So if you can hit him, one to the head and two to the body, go back to the head, go back to the body, go back to the head, go back to the body. We also see it in MMA, and it was any bad moment that Marab had, it's when Marab got away from that. When Marab, Marab got away from, hey, I've already had success closing the distance, getting him down. When I got him there, I was able to get some good time. When Marab would get away from that, it was problematic. When he would come back in, so now you've got a technique. You don't necessarily have a battle of skills. You don't have a, a, a martial arts display, which the techniques and the movements to a purist in martial arts, which to a large degree, Sean is. And Sean certainly is to a much larger degree than Marab. And you guys have seen this, okay? Even if you didn't do martial arts, you, you will have seen this. They will move you up in the belt system in a number of traditional martial arts with things that you will do with the air. It's called kata. You do not have to compete. You don't even need to drill with a partner. It's about movements and fundamentals and making sure that you understand how to do those. And one way you can take that away is when you grind a guy, you grab a hold of him and you get him down. So I have to go back to that because it's rinse and repeat where it was the same movement, right? The end of the day, we had a guy that was good with the double legs go out there and score some double legs. So my partner, Ryan, loves marketing. And he's told me this a number of times, and I just, I had his voice echoing in my ear as I'm watching this, this master monster event going down in the sphere. Ryan, the UFC has been disciplined from day one to put the best against the best. They will not get away from that. It is what separates them from boxing and every other combat sport. It doesn't matter if you've got boxes upon boxes of t-shirts and merchandise for the bigger star and you gotta go stick them in a, a rented storage unit. Best will fight the best. And as I'm watching this unfold, I'm watching their biggest star who is in a nightmare of a matchup and he's having a difficult time with one position. I'm watching that happen and I'm thinking about that. And I'm thinking, yeah. This is exactly what Ryan told me that Dana had said, and I heard him do it with my own ears almost 20 years ago. Evident of the fact that Umar Nurmagomedov is sitting there waiting for him, right? I mean, o O'Malley goes out and has his best performance ever against Cheeto Vera, only to come to the post-fight press conference and find that DraftKings has him a two-to-one underdog against Marab. Marab just had his best performance ever against O'Malley only to come to the press conference and find out he is an opening line underdog to Nurmagomedov. And it is something about our sport. It is something about this division. And when I look at the X's and O's, Marab is good with doubles, and he has a stunning level of conditioning. I would think if those two are going to fight, okay, we can go ahead and bet. But if we're going to put them in a CrossFit exercise, or we're going to put them in a a hundred yard sprint, or we're going to put him in a 10 mile ride. I feel like we all know, right? Like he's just made for these kinds of things. And I didn't think there was a huge gap between these two skills. As much as the fight was clear, how the judges are going to score this, I didn't think there was a gap in the skills. The stand up and the hurt and the pain and the pain on the face and the frustration and the mental side of it, you're putting boxes in O'Malley. That takedown, that conditioning, that, hey, maybe I'm going to look at least like, like I, I want it more. I haven't had it, and you have. You went to Marab. But I don't feel like that's anything that us as reasonable people didn't know ahead of time. 